let's see. All right, people are jumping on. We'll give this a few minutes to let all of our attendees join. All right, let's see. Oh, they're still being added. If you're joining us, we're just waiting for all of the attendees to come into the room. It just takes a minute for it to populate. Okay. Um, it looks like we have, all right, I think our, our attendee number has stayed steady or it's going slowly. So um, I'm gonna go ahead and open the meeting and welcome all of the attendees. My name is Ingrid Alverde. I am the Director of Economic and Development and Open Government for the City of Petaluma. Um, and we're here tonight to talk about some proposed improvements to the Rainier Avenue um, corridor between McDowell and Sonoma Mountain Parkway. I'm gonna introduce Christopher Bolt, our Director of Public Works to um, get our meeting started today. So thank you for joining us. Thank you, Ingrid. I'm Christopher Bolt. I'm the Director of Public Works and Utilities here in Petaluma. I wanna welcome you to tonight's meeting, a very important discussion about uh, safety and uh, enhancements for active transportation on Rainier. So I'd like to introduce uh, Gina Benedetti-Petnik, our Assistant Director of Public Works and Utilities. Also Ken Eichstedt, our Senior Traffic Engineer here at the city. He's been working on this project for quite some time. Also Jessica Medina with Communications here at the city. And I'll turn it over now to David Parisi with uh, uh, Parisi Transportation Consulting. Thanks, Christopher. Uh, good evening, everybody. I'm David Parisi, a civil engineer and traffic engineer with Parisi Transportation Consulting. And um, we plan and design street renovations. I'm joined tonight by two of my colleagues, uh, Bree Adams, a transportation engineer with the firm, and Jennifer Schreiber, transportation planner uh, with the company. And Tonight, I'm going to provide a, uh, a presentation. I'm gonna to try to get through it as quickly as possible, but there's a lot to cover. Um, we're gonna do a couple polls within that presentation. And um, then we're gonna open it up to your questions and, and comments. And really this, this whole meeting is, is to hear from, uh, from you folks about what works, what doesn't work, some of the ideas that we are gonna be presenting and really to get feedback from you. So without further ado, I'm gonna actually put a presentation up on the screen here and uh, make sure you can all see that. And if I get a thumbs up from somebody that says it works, appreciate that, excellent. All right, um, super. So again, we're here for a workshop and um, tonight's agenda consists of five different topics. We're going to cover a little bit of background about the project and then cover current uh, conditions along uh, Rainier Avenue. Uh, we're gonna present some ideas to calm the street, uh, make it safer for everybody using it, as well as some uh, conceptual plans that, that we've developed. And then we're gonna turn it over to you to really hear about, uh, again, what works, what doesn't work on the street, give us feedback on some of these ideas. And then finally, we'll just do a wrap up of uh, next steps for the project. So a little bit about the background on Rear Near Avenue. Uh, the project limits that we're talking about tonight are between Sonoma Mountain Parkway and North McDowell Boulevard. And although the street kind of runs um, southwest to northeast, we're going to refer to it as an east-west street just for directionality uh, and for some of the ideas that we're going to present tonight. The project does consider uh, the Crosstown Connector project either with or without it. So we're gonna talk a little bit more about that. Uh, we have no idea if the project will, will occur in the future, but if it does or doesn't, what we're gonna be um, presenting tonight will work just the same. And we're gonna spend most of the time 
presenting opportunities on how to calm the street. Um, because again, the project, we actually may not even know this, it needs to be repaved. The pavement is in, in really poor shape. So speaking about that, because the pavement needs to be repaved, that means all the striping on top of it will need to be replaced. And that, that presents a great opportunity for doing lots of things um, by uh, reconfiguring the lanes and crosswalks and, and things such as that. Uh, we actually are seeing an opportunity to reduce speeding and decrease the amount of collisions that occur out there through some uh, innovative techniques with striping. Also, there's a possibility uh, to provide exclusive turning lanes, particularly for left turns in and out of driveways. So a uh, motorist doesn't have to worry about somebody coming up fast behind them in a through lane. There's a, a lack of crosswalks and some crosswalks aren't marked uh, high visibility. So there's an opportunity to improve the crossings as well for pedestrians and uh, reduce some of those distances of those crosswalks. It's a wide street. Uh, it's a very wide street and there's some opportunities to decrease the length of some of these crosswalks and improve the visibility between pedestrians and oncoming motorists. There's also the opportunity to provide separated bike lanes, more than just the, the white uh, stripe that's separating cyclists from traffic today. There's a number of bus stops that um, also could be enhanced, but overall we're looking at the opportunity to enable safety for everybody using the street as part of the repaving and restriping of the project. Hey, David, I'm going to interrupt really quick. Sure. Um, there are um, two attendees with their hands up. Okay. And I wanted to, um, uh, I wanted to double check. Did we want to wait? I think our plan is to wait until the end of the presentation to take comments and questions. Yeah, I think that'd be best because there's so, a lot, there's a lot to cover and I may cover it during the presentation itself. So I just wanted to let you know, um, I see two of you have your hands up um, and we'll get to you as soon as we just get through some slides. So everyone's got the same, the same basic background before we go into comments and questions. Thanks for noticing that Ingrid, appreciate that. Uh, we do wanna talk also about the capital improvement life cycle and how we develop transportation projects. You know, it goes through a number of phases, typically a planning, a design and a construction phase. And during the planning and design phase is generally where we really want to get as much community input as possible. Um, there's been some in the past, and we're going to tell you tonight what we've heard so far. Of course, we want to hear more. And we're still in the planning phase, finishing it up, almost going to go into design phase now. And uh, during design phase is where we take the plans and really, really hone them and get them uh, refined. The hope is during construction, uh, is actually to undertake construction this summer. So the project um, is going at a pretty good uh, pace and your input tonight is gonna to be very important to us. We've heard a lot and uh, the feedback that the city has received so far has come in the form of uh, some of the forums through uh, emails, uh, discussions with staff um, and other committees. And this is just a, uh, a few of the things that we've summarized, uh, folks have been, would love to see the crossings be safer for pedestrians, prevent conflicts between cyclists and, and car doors because the bike lanes are right next to the parked cars. Um, some people are saying that Rainier is really not used by cyclists or that it's not inviting for cyclists and maybe that's why it's not used too well. Uh, other things that we've heard so far to possibly add some landscaping to the street, better separate out the different traffic modes connect to the new North uh, train station, provide a crossing at places that don't have pedestrian crossings today, including Acadia. Um, there's been some questions about how the Crosstown connector could affect Rainier. We'll talk about that tonight as well. Um, the effects on school drop-off and pickup, maybe considering a roundabout. These are just some of, the, some of the feedback we've heard so far. And again, later tonight, we wanna hear from you uh, about additional things. But actually, I'm going to stop right now, and uh, we want to hear uh, from you right now about um, a couple of questions we want to get some feedback on. So I'm going to turn it to Jen. All right. So before we go any further, we want to know more about you all who have come out tonight to attend this webinar. Um, we have 29 of you, so I'm about to launch a poll. I'm just asking some basic questions. Um, first off, where do you live? And you can use this map here on the slide um, 
to choose which sort of segment you live in, A, B, C, D, E, or somewhere else. Um, if the poll is covering the map, you can just move it over um, so you can see that better. And then secondly, we'd like to hear how you usually travel through and or across Rainier Avenue. And you can pick up to two options um, for the modes that you usually use in the area. And again, Jen, I think like you said, you can move the poll over uh, to the side so you can see the full map where, where the letters are for each area. And then for the second question, you can scroll down, I think. Yep. Right to answer that question. Excellent. Exactly. So you'll monitor this and when we get enough people to respond, we'll report back. Yep. Right now we're at 62%. So we'll give it a little more time um, for more of you to finish filling out that poll. The right, polls in the way of the map, I'm just going to reiterate, um, you can just grab the menu bar at the top where the white bar is and, and hold down your um, mouse button and just scoot it over to the side so you can see the full map. All right, it looks like we are pretty steady here at 79%, so 23 out of the 29 of you have responded. So let's just go ahead and show those results. We should all now be able to see the poll results. So first off, we're asking where everyone lives. And it looks like most people, so 65% of the attendees here tonight, live somewhere else in Petaluma, so somewhere not marked off on this map. 9% um, live in that A segment, so north of Rainier and west of Maria. And then 9% also live in C, so south of Rainier and also west of Maria Drive. Um, and then a, a smattering of folks from the other segments here as well. Um, so question two, how do you usually travel through and or across Rainier Avenue? It looks like most of you do drive. So 61% of people said that they drive um, through, the, through the street. 52%, uh, so over half of you also bike and 26% walk to and through and across Rainier Avenue. Um, so a lot of different modes represented here. Um, no one noted taking public transit, but we do have a good um, representative of driving, walking, and biking through the area. Jen, are you able to scroll down? Because I'm not able to see the results for question two. Um, can you scroll down yourself? I, I'm actually scrolled down in my view, so I can see them. Oh, okay. I'm not seeing them. Um, yeah, There's you a little bar to the right. Yeah. So if you want to see, grab the bar. I was just, that just wasn't working for me. So <laughs> hopefully it works better for everybody else. <laughs> All right. So thanks to everyone who participated. Um, going to hand it back over to David now. Excellent. Thank you. All right. Um, I'm going to continue on the presentation. And uh, let's see, is my, is one sees, sees the uh, same slide? Okay, excellent. Okay, now I want to go through some of the conditions about the street that that we've been taking a look at uh, later on. If there's something I missed, please, please, please let us know. Again, this, the segment of street that we're looking at is between North McDowell and Sonoma Mountain Parkway. It's about two thirds of a, of a mile. And um, as you can see from this next map, nearby and adjacent land use is a primarily residential. Uh, there's a lot of open space and park areas, uh, several schools nearby, but generally it's, it's pretty much a residential residential district. And, um, um, and that's the type of, a lot of the traffic we see is, is commuting traffic through this area. The conditions along the road are, uh, as I mentioned before, the pavement is in really cruddy shape. You can see the picture on the bottom left. That's just, uh, you can find this anywhere along the roadway. Uh, the roadway is really decomposing fast and it's really important uh, on pavement to, to get to it as soon as possible and, and recon, you know, uh, condition it and repave it. So that is the impetus for the project. Um, Rainier Avenue uh, is a wide street. Also, the photo on the top right uh, just shows the, uh, the width of the street. It, it's up to 64 feet wide along most of the distance. Which is interesting to me as a traffic engineer because um, this roadway carries about 6,000 cars a day and in most roadways that, that carry 6,000 cars are, are much narrower, uh, around 40 feet or so. So um, on the other hand, that presents some, some nice opportunities to do some things that, that we're going to be talking about tonight for calming the street and providing a safer environment. 
Uh, bicyclists uh, do have uh, some narrow bike lanes next to on-street parking, where parking exists along the street. They're separated by a white stripe. Um, we saw the comment earlier, oh, um, you know, some, some bicyclists are worried about getting what's called doored, a door opening from a parked car, because again, the bike lanes are right next to the parked vehicles, and on the other side is the outside traffic lanes. So um, there's an opportunity there. Obviously, uh, Maria Drive was recently repaved, and some nice bike facilities were provided on that roadway. From a pedestrian standpoint, we know there's a, a few marked crosswalks. There's some uh, intersections that don't have marked crosswalks at all. But these crosswalks, again, the street is long, um, so 64 feet long. And um, you, know, you, have, you gotta hustle if you see a traffic coming at you pretty fast uh, to get across the street. And we'll talk more about that uh, with this next slide. There's, um, here this map is showing in those white lines where the marked crosswalks exist. They're signalized at North McDowell and at Sonoma Mountain Parkway. Maria Drive is a four-way all, or always stop sign controlled intersection with a marked crosswalks and then at Rushmore Avenue. Uh, there are no crosswalks at Prince Albert or at Acadia or anywhere else in between. So uh, we have heard, uh, as I mentioned before, that there is definitely a lack and some folks would love to see uh, additional marked crossings or safer crossings across Rainier. We know that there's uh, a number of bus stops along and very close to Rainier Avenue and is served by four bus routes. These bus routes are generally accessed by people walking to them or away from them, including students. So, uh, you know, we, we know that these, these have been very active in pre-COVID times and probably pick back up and uh, very important for many, uh, many people. We also took a look at uh, parking along Rainier Avenue. It's available along both curbs and those areas that are shown in white here. Um, and there's, it's parallel parking and there's a ton of supply. Actually, you can park, we, we counted, uh, uh, almost about two, an opportunity for about 204 cars to park along Rear and Area Avenue. That's a lot. And um, most of that, as you can see here, 45, about 45 uh, spaces, well, not exactly spaces, but opportunities for park on the north side, west of Maria, 42 on the south side, west of Maria, east of Maria, about 53 spaces on the north side and 64 on the south side. So a lot of curb space that provides opportunities for parking. But what's interesting is when we've uh, done a few surveys uh, during the weekday in the middle of the day and the weekday at nighttime when people are home and on a weekend, the most amount of parking we've seen so far is shown in these numbers right here. And about what we're seeing is from west of Maria Drive, only about a third of the uh, curve space has been used for parking. So there's uh, a lot of parking spaces still available and even more to the east of Maria Drive, where uh, only one in seven, uh, you know, only less than 13% of the curve space is used by uh, park vehicles. To put this in perspective, uh, west of Maria, for instance, if all of the parking was shifted to one side based on the demand, there'd still be, um, it's still only be about 60, 65% full. So there's some opportunities here um, that we're gonna talk about and we definitely wanna hear from you on these later on. Speeds, the posted speed limit on Rainier is 35 miles an hour, which uh, to me seems a little high for a residential type of uh, street that's bounded by residential uses, um, but that's what it is. And it's usually speed limits are set based on how people are, how fast people are driving and they're driving fast along Rainier Avenue. As a matter of fact, the 85th percentile speed as measured along the street is 40 miles an hour. What that means is 85% of people drive 40 miles an hour or less. And typically that's 85th percentile number is what is used to justify a posted speed limit. We do know, however, based on um, discrete speed surveys that were conducted, that there's people driving much faster than that, uh, 45 or, or more miles an hour. And that has us, has us very concerned. We believe that this wide road, uh, the number of lanes really is contributing to the high speeds along the street. 
And tonight, we're again, we're going to be talking about the opportunities to redesign the street, not move the curbs, but actually restripe it and do some things that can accommodate both the vehicle and parking demands that I just talked about a moment ago, but at the same time, reduce speeding. And we have some ideas uh, to present tonight. I do want to note that there's a new assembly bill that was recently passed called Assembly Bill Number 43. And what this is going to offer is to some communities starting in 2024, year 2024, the opportunity to um, downzone the speed limit on some streets, not all their streets. But this will only be effective, again, in a few years, only on a, only on a portion of streets, but will require enforcement. So tonight we're really gonna be discussing what can we do to redesign the street to encourage people to reduce the speeds without requiring enforcement. So how can we redesign the street to achieve that objective? And why that's important is because we all know that the higher speeds uh, really can impact and um, or increase the amount of severe injuries or even fatalities. This chart, which is from the National Traffic Safety Board, shows that you know, if you get hit by a car going 40 miles an hour as a pedestrian, you have an 85% chance of being killed. On the other hand, that gets reduced almost in half if you get hit by a car going 30 miles an hour. And substantially, if you're only hit, if you're hit by a car going 20 miles an hour or less, just 5%. And the same thing goes with a lot of the injuries too. So it's really important to get speeds to a reasonable range um, particularly, um, we, we'd love to reduce this, these excessive speeds that we're seeing along uh, Rainier Avenue. We've also looked at the amount of re reported at collisions that have occurred along the street in a five-year period between January 1st, 2015 and December 31st, 2019. There was 15 reported collisions during that time frame, and these do not include collisions that have occurred uh, at McDowell or as, at Sonoma. Uh, Mountain Parkway, these are in between, and um, that's a high number. These are ones that have just been reported. And we know in our profession that for every reported collision, there's two or three that goes unreported. So these are the ones that have been reported. And, and primarily these were reported because many of them consisted of injuries, about 60% had injuries, and including all four of those that included uh, bicyclists or pedestrians. Uh, those were injuries in all four of those cases. The collisions, from the records were caused mainly due to excessive speeds along the roadway, uh, drivers not yielding the right of way at a crosswalk, either when they're going straight across it or when they're turning across a crosswalk on a side street. So these, these are some of the factors that have us, have us concerned. I now wanna talk about traffic along uh, Rainier Avenue. This is a, a diagram that shows the traffic in the eastbound and westbound directions over the course of a typical weekday from midnight to midnight with a peak, uh, occurs about 8 a.m. on Rainier. That's a peak hour. Uh, it peaks again later in the day. And it's really interesting uh, what we've seen, and, and this is 2019 data, so this is pre-COVID, is that about three, 325 cars or less travel along or near in each direction every hour. So that is, um, that's an important number to us because it can tell us what we can and can't do along a street such as Rainier Avenue. This next chart shows you the capacity, the traffic carrying capacity that Rainier carries. And it's, it's, it's huge, to be honest. It actually, with four lanes or two, two through lanes in each direction, has the capability of accommodating 16 100 cars per hour in each direction. In other words, 800 cars per hour per lane. So you can see there's a huge um, difference between how much traffic it is carrying today and the capacity that it has. And of course, this large difference really uh, encourages uh, speeding and is a more, more traffic capacity than the roadway really, really needs at this point in time. So it was, it was designed to carry a lot more traffic than it does, about four times or more. So that's why I'm going to step right into some ideas that we have for uh, calming the street based on the uh, concerns that we've heard from the community and the ability of the street to accommodate some different types of concepts. There's a term I'm going to use here called quick build. And these are um, improvements that can be uh, quickly implemented through painting, 
uh, colorized striping, um, signing, use of attractive ballers and things like that. And uh, if need be down the line, they could also be removed, but hopefully that wouldn't need to occur. But quick build is uh, wonderful. Here's an example shown in this photograph right here of um, a crosswalk that was uh, reduced in length and roadway lanes that were also reduced. So some of the sample enhancements that we're gonna show um, will include things like providing high visibility crosswalks where they don't exist or taking crosswalks that are not high visibility and uh, creating uh, zebra stripes or ladders like it's shown here in the top right photo. In some cases, if we're gonna add new crosswalks, perhaps, uh, well, we, not perhaps, we have to add curb ramps if they don't exist uh, in compliance with Americans with Disabilities Act. So we'll be looking at those as well. Bike lanes, we know that there's, there's narrow bike lanes on the street today. Uh, those could be um, improved either by buffering them, by providing a wider buffer between the bike lane and the vehicular travel lane, or as shown in the bottom, providing what's called a protected bikeway. And there's different ways to do it. This photo here shows a bikeway that has parked cars, uh, not against the curb anymore, but just out um, several feet with a buffer so that people can open their car doors. And then bicyclists are actually protected from ongoing traffic by the park vehicles themselves in that huge buffer space. So that's something we're gonna chat about tonight. Um, really, um, these are the, uh, this is where things are going um, for pro providing better safety for cyclists. There's also the opportunity when um, some lanes are moved around or reallocated on a roadway to possibly provide a refuge island in the middle of the street, uh, which is great because you can make a street crossing in two stages, cross one stream of traffic at a time, stop, find refuge in an island that's at least six feet wide, look at the traffic in the other direction before you cross the street again. So much, um, uh, it's a treatment I really like for improving pedestrian crossings. And we've heard, and you saw it earlier in the comments about what can be done for the street uh, as far as some landscaping and possibly doing some street trees or planning for that in the future. And we'd love to hear your ideas for that tonight as well and see if that one's on, on target. And then finally, all of these treatments are levels of traffic calming. And by traffic calming, uh, we're really trying to focus on getting the speeds to a reasonable pace, uh, trying to avoid cars going to 45 miles an hour or more, but getting everybody down to the 30 mile an hour range, uh, which can carry all the traffic just fine without any additional delays. Um, but traffic calming can be done along the street as well. I showed you a lot of treatments at intersections, but it can be done by narrowing lanes or reallocating lanes or, or shifting some of the traffic flows. And one of my favorites, particularly for a street like Rainier, would be to think about shifting the amount of tra through traffic lanes from four, in other words, in two, two three lanes in each direction to a three lane street uh, with the center two-way left turn lane. And there's a lot of advantages to this. And there's been a lot of uh, studies done. Many, many different cities are implementing um, these roadway conversions when the conditions are right. And we think the conditions are right for Rainier Avenue uh, based on the traffic volumes and some of the uh, needs of the street. But according to the Federal Highway Administration and a study that they've done on several road diets, actually many road diets that have been done throughout the nation, they've seen that um, the three lane conversions can reduce collisions substantially. Uh, they can also reduce travel speeds by at least three miles an hour. And this one's important to me, that's the average speed that they can reduce um, travel speeds by. What's important is that it really uh, can reduce those outlier speeds, those the 45s and 50s and get those way down, uh, which is uh, what we wanna see. Certainly can result in less severe collisions. Uh, they can provide fewer vehicular lanes to cross if you're a pedestrian with or without one of those refuge islands that I uh, showed you a moment ago. Enables better visibility between pedestrians and oncoming motorists. Can allow space for bicyclists in different types of uh, lane arrangements. And believe it or not, with the traffic volumes that we see on Rainier can actually provide smoother travel traffic flow. Instead of big variation in speeds, 
more uniform speeds along the street and the ability for people making left turns in and out of driveways to actually have a safe place to do it instead of worrying about a, a driver behind them, possibly uh, rear ending them from behind. So I'm gonna get back to some of the charts I was showing you before. Um, again, Rainier's four lanes really do encourage speeding and other unsafe behaviors. We've seen it with the uh, collision statistics and with the speed data. And there's just a large difference uh, between the volumes that are out there today and the capacity of that street. Converting Rainier from, three, from four to three lanes would still provide extra capacity. Um, you know, it actually would continue serving the volumes that you have today, and it provide that ability to calm the street. You can see that the capacity of the roadway would still be over twice of what the traffic volumes currently are during peak times. So it's a great candidate for a conversion from four to three streets. Now, many people have asked about, well, what about the uh, Crosstown Connector? And we've taken a look at some of the studies and projections that have been done for that roadway or for that, that connection. And we've, um, this next chart shows what those projections look like. Um, it, I think the Crosstown Connector is, uh, would increase traffic possibly, again, if it occurs by 60 to 65%. But those volumes, even during peak times, would still be substantially lower than the capacity that the roadway would provide with uh, a four to three lane conversion. So that's an important, important note. All right, so with this information and what we've heard from the community so far, um, there's been some preliminary concepts that have been developed that we wanna walk through tonight and during Q and A and during the public input time, get your feedback on those. And there's two different segments we're looking at because the roadway changes in two different areas from North McDowell to Rushmore, I'll talk about that first. And then from Rushmore to Sonoma Mountain Parkway, I'll present some different options for that area. So first off, North McDowell to Rushmore um, existing, this is what's called a cross section. This is looking down the street. Currently there's uh, four traffic lanes. Obviously there's also a turning lane at North McDowell, but ignoring that for a moment, typically the street has uh, two lanes going westbound, two lanes going eastbound. It also has uh, bike lanes, narrow bike lanes in each direction and sidewalks. So what we're proposing as our recommendation would be to do the four to three lane conversion, which would look like this instead. So there'd be traffic calming along the street with all those benefits that I talked about. Um, there, it would end up with three vehicular lanes, one in each direction, we still have turning lanes at McDowell, by the way, left turn lanes, so the intersection wouldn't change much uh, at this traffic light, but there'd be uh, one lane in each direction plus a, a center turning lane. And then the ability to provide bike, bike lanes that are actually separated with buffers and uh, are protected. Um, a lot of the other amenities that we presented earlier would also be possible, including crosswalk enhancements and uh, other things such as that. We have a couple different options we want to share with you for the longer segment between uh, Rushmore and Sonoma Mountain Parkway. And this is where the road is, is wider. It's 64 feet on average for that entire stretch. It also, currently today, it has uh, generally two lanes in each direction, um, including at Maria. But at Sonoma Mountain Parkway, there's turning lanes, which would still be maintained. But this is how it looks today. So two lanes uh, westbound, two lanes eastbound. There's parking along most of both curbs, the northern curb and the southern curb. Uh, there's a narrow bikeway um, in between the uh, park cars and the, the traffic. We have two options we want to share with you tonight. And really, they're kind of mirror images of, the other, of each other. The first one, which we're going to call option A, would also reduce the number of traffic lanes on the street from four to three with one lane in each direction as shown in these white vehicles here and a center turning lane. This center turn lane would extend all the way to Maria Drive, so there'd be left turns, exclusive left turn lanes at the stop controlled intersection of Maria Drive. It would also serve the driveways in and out 
uh, in between many of the intersections. And as noted before, still plenty of capacity would be provided along the street. Uh, there'd be no ex uh, there'd be no addition to the delays or travel times along um, Rainier Avenue at all. Under option A, what we're showing is bike lanes on both sides against the curbs, and then parking being shifted in option A to the north side of the street. So the parking on the south side would be eliminated. All parking would be on the north side of the street. Um, and based on the parking demand studies that we've done so far, there'd still be plenty of parking uh, along the roadway. By the way, there'd also be the opportunity if, uh, if it made sense to add a crosswalk or two mid block to provide one of those refuge islands in the middle. And I'll show you a plan view of that momentarily. So option B is similar to this, but it's a, it's a, a mirror image. And what we've done is we're just showing the opportunity, uh, again, of a th four to three lane conversion, bike lanes on both sides of the road. But instead of parking being on the north side, parking would be on the south side of the street with a buffer between the parking and, and the bikeway. So we'd love to hear from folks tonight about uh, these ideas. They're they, they really option A and B. The only difference is where the parking would be located. Um, just to put this from like, uh, looking at this from a plan view or, or from the sky, option A, uh, we've kind of sketched it out. This is what it would look like from Rushmore uh, a little bit to the uh, east. Uh, in this option A, there'd be three lanes of traffic, including a center turning lane, which again would be very uh, beneficial for people coming in and out of their driveways. This shows the uh, bike lane, the eastbound bike lane against the south side of the street with a buffer. And the westbound bike lane on the north side of the street also with a buffer. And the parking under option A would be over here. Um, we didn't show the brakes, there would be brakes for actually accessing the different driveways. So that's kind of give you just, hopefully that helps understand how that would, would work and what it would look like. We also created a, a quick graphic of what the Maria Drive intersection could look like as well under this option. And what you'll see here is again, turning lanes which don't exist today for the stop signs. So I know some people get confused if they don't put their directional or the blinkers on, if people are turning left or not, but it'll be very obvious. People who are turning left would need to use this lane uh, through movements in the through lanes. But what you're seeing here is the opportunity to do some bulb outs, again, with colorized pavement. Um, perhaps eventually these would be uh, concrete, but initially as part of the project, they'd be colorized, possibly with some bollards, reducing the uh, crossing distance and increasing the uh, visibility uh, for pedestrians. So that's just a, a snapshot of what that could look like. So to recap, we're looking at, as part of uh, Rainier, uh, some ideas to really calm the street, make it a safer street for everybody using it, including motorists, get the speeds to what should be reasonable without increasing uh, delays along the street. We know that the street with uh, four to three lane conversion will accommodate all existing traffic during the peak hours uh, and beyond. And if uh, the Crosstown connector was, was built, it would still accommodate that traffic. It increased the safety for left turns into and out of Rainier. For pedestrians, obviously uh, slower speeds will make the street more inviting to walk along or across. We can look at some additional crossings, obviously would reduce the crossing distances and increase the visibility and safety for uh, pedestrians, including children. For bicyclists, also providing the buffers will uh, increase cyclist safety, and um, particularly with the uh, separation, and that's, that's a big deal. There's also some additional benefits for uh, transit users and the bus stops, as we described previously. So with that, I'm gonna, we're gonna take a little pause and do, a, do another poll, and then we're gonna open it up to your input. And so with that, Jen, I'm gonna turn it to you. All right, so before we go into the discussion, um, we would like to hear from you again um, through another poll. So you should be able to see this poll right now on your screen. And we wanna know what are your priorities for improving the safety of Rainier Avenue? And you can pick up to three options. So do you wanna calm and slow vehicle traffic, provide exclusive left turn lanes for cars, 
preserve enough vehicle parking to meet demands, add more marked crosswalks, reduce crosswalk distances, add separated bike lanes, enhance bus stops, or add street trees. So again, please choose up to three and we'll give it uh, a minute or two um, just to make sure we get as many of you as possible to respond. And Jen, this is the only question this time, right? This is the only question. Okay. All right, we've got about half of you so far out of 33 participants. All right, we'll give it about 20 more seconds. We're up to All right, we've got 81%, so 27 out of 33 people have responded. So let's go ahead and look at the results. So it looks like 59% of you um, would like to calm and slow vehicle traffic. So that was the highest priority um, out of these options. Um, also tied actually with um, adding separated bike lanes, which also got 59% of attendees. Um, up next, it looks like 44% of you would like to add street trees along the street, um, while 41% each want to add more marked crosswalks and reduce crosswalk distances and increase pedestrian visibility. 22% um, want exclusive left turn lanes for cars, while 15% want to um, make it a priority to preserve enough vehicle parking to meet demand and 4% would like to enhance bus stops. Um, so great, thank you very much for your participation and I'll pass back to David. Excellent, thanks, Jen. Okay, great. Uh, well, now we get to hear from you um, more directly. Thanks for participating in the polls. And at this point, we're gonna turn it uh, over to you for, for feedback and Ingrid, I think, are you gonna kind of um, let people know when they can chime in? Hey, David, yep. I think Jessica's going to jump in and she's going to moderate and I'll be um, filling in and taking notes. Okay, great. Super. You know what I think I'll do is, um, again, what we want to hear from you is, you know, your experiences traveling along or across Rainier today and just some of your input on potential calming and, and safety enhancements, including the, uh, the concepts we're recommending and, and, as well as the options. So again, feel free to, to chime in and give us your, give us your feedback, please. And um, I do believe this is how we have to, we get the feedback. Is this right, Jessica, raising the hands? Mm -hmm. Yes, yes. Okay, great. Yeah, there's a button in um, Zoom here. And if you're calling in, you can just hit star nine, but if you're using the computer, you push this uh, thing called reactions at the bottom on the screen, and then you just raise your hand. There's already a few people that have raised their hands. So, um, Jessica. All right, let's get going. Um, so I'm showing 10 people with raised hands and I'm just gonna go in the order that I see on my screen. Um, so first we have Taffy. Um, Taffy, you should be able to speak now. I see you're muted. There we go. Okay, um, I live in the middle of Rainier Avenue and um, there are several things I'm concerned about. One is I was wondering if you guys had done any surveys about the people who live in between Rushmore and Maria in the quads, because you're all concerned about bike riders and there are not that many bike riders on the street. Um, I, can you hear me? Yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yes. The other thing is you're you're concerned about slowing down the speeds, but changing it all around. I mean, you could put humps like in, in Golden Gate Park. People would stop speeding if they had to go over those 
big humps. I am really concerned about garbage days. We live on a quad. You're talking about 12 garbage cans. Where are you going to put them? The combined driveway in, in, on the quads are a fire lane. Cars are not supposed to be parking on that fire lane. Has anyone thought about that? Um, I personally don't want any trees because unless you, the city is gonna take care of those trees, I don't wanna take care of them. I'm 69 years old. I don't wanna be out there raking leaves. Um, how is this gonna affect our, our property value? I mean, ha has anyone done a survey on that? Is it going to increase it, decrease it? I would think it would decrease it in a way. Um, and the, the people in the condos, I know I've been told by Ken that that condo area has said that there's enough parking spaces for all those people over there. Those people are not, they're used to sitting, you're parking right there on that street and walking 30, 40 feet into their apartment. So they're gonna come over and park on our side. And um, where we live, tell them, we have a lot of cars. Tell them about the huge blind spot, Jack. There's oh, another. and there's another thing. Um, when, when you come out from, that, from a driveway, okay? And you're gonna have the sidewalk, you're gonna have the bike lane, you're gonna have cars parked there, we are on, there is a blind spot from our driveway to Maria. So trying to get out and make a left-hand turn is going to be next to impossible. Anything else? No. Um, fire land, no thought about handicapped. Um, if you do the parking on the other side of the, of the street, um, my mother-in-law is going to have a hard time coming to my house. Um, I think that's pretty much it. I'm really concerned, though, about the garbage. OK. OK, thank you, Taffy. Um, next, we have Stone. And Stone, you should be able to speak now. Yeah, hi. Actually, Steen, my name is Christine Cresci. Oh. Actually, I actually re I reside over there at 1500 block of Rainier. I actually work for the city and county of San Francisco for parking enforcement and traffic. So I have actually seen ramifications from people making decisions. And I'm listening in and, you know, thank you for having this. But, you know, I hear all these polls you are having, but there were any polls on my block. I see on your polls thing here in the section D where we live, nobody pit that. I couldn't hit the beat the D quick enough because I it moved off my screen and I couldn't come back to it. But everybody doesn't live there. We're talking about people who have lived there. My father and my stepmother retired there. Okay, this is their home. This is where they come in and out of. And and they're they're reaching their years where they don't they don't they shouldn't have to worry about this. I get that I get that there might be traffic that come in and out of there, but I'm there on that block every day. I'm not there periodically like you guys have been and whatnot. And yeah, okay, maybe the streets do need to be slowed down. I think the hump thing is is something that can be taken care of. What about what about parking and the behavioral aspects of it? Can this man, Ken, I, I, I don't know how to say your last name, sir. I actually spoke with him on the street one day and he said that the people in the condos should use their garages. That should be up to them if they do so or not. So what, what happens when they park in front of my house, right? And so now I can no longer park in front of my house, but I'm not even parking along the curb. I'm going to be parked hovering between an enclosed bike lane, which nobody uses. And then my car is gonna be straddling a thin westbound traffic. Who's gonna pay for the property damage to my car if it gets swiped? 
because I'll let you know, because I have seen the ramifications from these things take place inside San Francisco, that those things will occur. When we come out of our driveway, there is a blind spot. So as we come out of it now, we have to look a couple more times for westbound traffic to come across in order, and it's, even if I'm gonna go westbound, I still have to double, triple check because there's a blind spot. So now you are telling me to come out of the house that I pay for, that I pay property taxes for. I'm not only gonna have to uh, maybe walk across traffic to go get to my car if you decide to put it on the south side, or I'm gonna have to walk a hundred feet to my parked car because you guys took away parking, or I'm going to have to ease out of my driveway, not only watch for the non-existing bicyclists, but look over trucks, cars, whoever is parked on the street to look, to hope I can see oncoming traffic to pull out of and hope I don't get hit. And I also understand that there are other things that are involved in this that's political. You guys have money to spend and you have to spend it in certain ways. I understand all of that, but I really don't feel that you guys reached out to the, to the people in that neighborhood. You may have put uh, information out to people, but I don't believe you went door to door and asked people who live on that block. And I really don't believe that people who live in that condo, behaviorals, I'm also, a, I, my major is behavioral science. They are not going to go and park across the street. They're not going to go park in their driveway because you guys say they're going to. They can park wherever they want. So that means they're going to come park on the north side, which is going to be limited because, okay, yeah, your statistics and whatnot, but between Westmore and Maria has the most parking on the south side. So those people are now gonna to come to the north side. So that means the people who live in those houses who have people living there are gonna to have to park far away from their houses just to accommodate this right here. I don't believe that you guys reached out to the people who own the homes in that neighborhood and actually live there because even the people responding or who are on this call don't live in this neighborhood. We live in this neighborhood. We're, we're, we're not allowed to park in the courtlet in the, in the uh, as you pull into the driveway, you're not allowed to park there. You have to park in your driveways or in your garages. So we're now supposed to take the threat of our cars getting vandalized because we need to have an enclosed park, uh, bike lane for non-using bicyclists because you say they're going to use it. How do you guarantee that they're going to use it? I sat out there all day one day to see how many bicyclists came out there because I talked to Ken. Man, I think I counted four. So you're gonna reconfigure my street that we pay taxes for, for four bicyclists. I'm not saying we don't need, maybe you can find a way to slow down and maybe you can move things around, but I'm worried about parking. I'm worried about my father and my stepmother coming in and out of their driveway that they pay a lot of money for. And I'm worried about where they're gonna park their car at night. I'm worried about how far away they gotta put their garbage bags out when they when they got to put out their garbage I don't believe any of these things have been addressed and I don't think it's fair to the people who live in that neighborhood that this is just because I've even gone around and asked people who live on that block and no one was talked to no one was talked to I had to sit down and explain to them what was going to take place and they were all dumbfounded that they didn't have any idea this was going to take place but they don't know how to speak about it and I feel that might be something that you guys maybe intentionally did, maybe not. But when you talk to the majority of people on that block, especially who live on Maria to Rushmore, and those, I think they're called courtlets or wherever the four quads are, they, they haven't had any kind of conversations with any of you people to explain to them the ramifications of this. Christine, I'm going to interrupt. Thank you so much for sharing. Um, I you. wanted to give David a chance to respond. Um, and I was just going to. You know, um, I was going to suggest, Ingrid, maybe I'll, I'll start out and then David can can fill okay. in. Just Perfect. Because, um, thank, thank you, Christine. Um, it was good meeting you. And, and um, you know, also Taffy, I want to I want to just go through <laughs> some of these items and, and make sure we address them. Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna start 
you know, Taffy, with regard to the uh, speed humps, that's something that the city is looking at. Um, it's it's typically more appropriate for sort of a local neighborhood street. This is this particular street is a as a connector, but we're working you know working through that process. We we are working through that process uh, with you know fire safety. Um, regarding garbage days, you know the you have to move the the trash can a little bit further out there, but it's it's very it's very doable. There's nothing that, that would, um, you know, hinder that operation. Um, heard you very much on, on the no trees, um, you know, regarding property values, I can't specifically speak to it, but I find that a lot of times, um, when you encourage people want to walk and bike and, and, you know, safely that actually property values go up and there are studies to that regard. Um, you can certainly email me if you want to get more information and I'll find that. Um, you know, regarding the parking and specific to Park Place, which is between Maria and Rushmore, there is parking inside that, that facility. I spoke with the property management company. The tenant agreement for that property is that um, they can only have two cars each. And I, I think that, that there's there's things that the people may have more than two cars uh, per unit, but I did see, you know, parking on Rushmore and on Maria to accommodate that. Um, regarding the blind spot that both you, Taffy, and, and Christine brought up, you, we would hold back the cars, um, you know, at the driveways there so that there's, there's some daylighting so that the sight lines to safely pull out are there. And again, you have the left turn lane, you have the middle lane to give you a, a place to pull into. It's actually a safer condition. So um, I'd hope you'd consider that, please. Um, and um, the, um, and that, you see, that's the blind spot. I think, I think that's, that addresses the, the main points. Um, David, if you have anything to, to add to that, please. Thank you. I would like to jump in if I yeah. meant. That was a great overview, Ken. I just want to highlight that in general, when it comes to property values, that particular issue, I think people generally prefer to live in areas with slower traffic, quieter traffic, and increased uh, safety for their families and so forth. So if anything, I would argue that uh, an initiative like what we're discussing this evening would likely uh, help property values and quality of life throughout the neighborhood. And Christopher and Ken, I'll, I'll add to that real quick. Uh, yeah, all the studies that we've shown is when you make a street more livable, and that's what we're talking about. When you make a street more livable for, for different users and safer, it does increase the property values. It makes it a place people really want to be. Um, the issue about speed humps, I, I concur with you, Ken. You know, speed humps are, would not be appropriate because they do slow down. Um, you know, fire trucks, paramedics that have very uh, sensitive instruments in the back and passengers. So that's why, we're, you know, it's more appropriate to do traffic calming through horizontal shifts or reducing lanes that we're talking about today. And great point about the parking, you know, if it's on one side or the other, there is plenty of curb space to accommodate it all on one side to still have extra parking. Um, and we want to hear from you tonight, you know, um, what are your thoughts? Uh, what should it be on if, if this is pursued on the north side or the south side? We can look at new crosswalks, refuge areas to uh, really reduce the amount of length people need to walk again, and also to calm traffic down. And then as Ken pointed out about the parking and sight lines in and out of driveways, yeah, definitely good design. We'll pull it back from the driveways. And as a matter of fact, um, there's enough room on this street to even put if you know a, a wider buffer between the parked cars and traffic on the side of the street where there'd be parked cars so um you know the the one benefit about rainier is it was designed to be too wide super wide but wide enough that we have a lot of opportunities to uh really address the different modes and make it a really safe and appealing street Ingrid, I think before we go on anymore, there was one question about the outreach, and that's what tonight's all about. And there was a lot of, um, right, I mean, people were notified. Maybe you want to talk a little bit about that real quick. Uh, again, this is to hear back from the community. 
Right. Thank you so much. Um, yeah, we're 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 hosting this meeting. We had sent out a flyer, and we did get some 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 good feedback, and and we thought that it would be helpful to have this meeting to give people a little bit more information beyond a flyer to understand um, a little better what was being considered and so that we could hear back from the community. So that was our hope tonight. And we're really thankful to each of you that are here to, to provide your feedback. Um, and uh, we'll, we'll post this video on the website for um, any of your neighbors. If you wanna let them know, they can, they can go back and watch um, the slide presentation and this discussion to get, to get more information. And I think um, we've got we've got about a dozen or so hands. So mm -hmm. um, this meeting, you know, unlike our our more official meetings, we don't have timers. We're our goal is to keep this a little bit more informal and conversational. With that, um, we will ask just for your just for your um, for your neighbors and those on the meeting uh, participating to to keep your comments brief or to get, you know, not to repeat what's already been said, just so we can make sure we get all the feedback. I don't wanna have a timer and mute people, um, but do um, just be thoughtful of the time. Thank you so much. And with that, I'm gonna hand it back to Jessica to go to our next hand. Okay, thanks Ingrid. Uh, next we have Teddy Herzog. So Teddy, you should be able to talk now. If you unmute, yeah. Hello everyone, this is Teddy. Uh, first, I just wanna say thank you to the Department of Public Works we're really kind of jumping in and making some of these complete street uh, details happen now that we're in this new wave of let's repair all the potholes in the streets over time. I'm really glad to see the complete street elements being quickly added as we go street by street and start doing these repairs. And I also honestly, <clears throat> excuse me, honestly want to thank Public Works and also the city in general for doing what I think is a pretty good job of trying to get public input. We'll ask couple of years I've seen it seen the city step up their game it's it's pretty from what I've seen it's pretty hard to get in, get the public to interact well with the government on these functions uh, but I'll just move on from there uh, I live on the west side so I rarely drive R Rainier sometimes I walk it not that often uh, but I do bicycle trips occasionally from what I've seen this is really a great opportunity to try these complete street uh, design features on Rainier, where you've only got 6,000 trips per day, you're still going to have plenty of flow and the capacities not going to be hindered by what's being proposed here or what's at least the initial design thoughts uh, that David uh, has mentioned. And David, really great presentation. I appreciate that. Uh, much of Petaluma, the streets are dangerous for bicycles. I'm a bicycle rider. Honestly, over time, I'd love to see myself as more of a bicycle rider. I see Petaluma as kind of at the beginning of becoming a bicycle town. And I feel like I'm a pioneer. You know, I, I ride mostly for fun, but I'm like a pioneer out in the frontier when I'm riding my bicycle around town. I've got the yellow jacket on. I've got the helmet on. And honestly, I'm taking my life in my own hands. I'm willing to do that. And, and you know, sometimes I talk to folks on uh, social media about things like complete streets and bicycles and Again and again, we hear, well, nobody's riding a bicycle now. And that's true because for them, you know, unless I'm on Lynch Creek Trail, pretty much anywhere else I'm riding is uh, taking my life into my own hands. Uh, so I really appreciate anything we can do to make it safer and more desirable for bicycles. And uh, that's from everything I've seen tonight. I love the protected bikeway. And personally, I love the idea of street trees. I'll end there. Thank you. Okay, thanks, Teddy. Um, let's see, next we have Janice Cater Thompson. Okay, Janice, you can go ahead. Okay, great, thank you very much. Um, mm -hmm. First of all, this has been very informative so far. Um, I think, I just wanna say that the quad lots are really part of a larger community. I've lived in this um, neighborhood for 40, 44 years. So I've been here a long time and I, I feel as though um, Rainier is dangerous. And I think what really stuck out was when you said if Rainier crossing is, is built, this area will have a 60 to 65% increase in traffic. And I have a real concern about truck traffic. 
because Rainier is not supposed to be a truck route and we're getting a lot of trucks on Rainier and they really need to stick to the truck routes. But if Rainier Crossing goes through, the neighborhood needs to understand the impacts of truck traffic and the impacts of 65% increased traffic. Um, I really like the idea of the ADA curb cuts. I would like to see um, lit crossings at Rainier and Prince Albert and also at Acadia. I like um, um, that there is no parking on the south side. I would like to suggest as far as parking on the north side for the residents of the of the quad lots that the city have an opportunity to, for permit parking. Permit parking that there's not a charge for, but every year you need to make sure that they have updated permits. And that's an option to, um, for people that are concerned about the parking from the south side parking on the north side. I like, I like protected bikeways. It looks really safe. We do have three schools in the area and Rainier is not safe for bicycle riders. And I have a lot of new young neighbors moving into my neighborhood and they're all bringing their bikes and riding um, the community. And what they say is that the area is very dangerous. Um, as, oh boy, hang on a second. Um, as far as property values, property values will actually increase because of safer streets. Um, Hang on. Uh, um, well, I think basically I really support the project and I just wanna make sure there's parking on the north side. I wanna make sure it's safe. I like the protected bike lanes and I really like the idea of trees because we're dealing with um, global warming and we have a group relief that could possibly help in our parks but maybe give um, guidance with this also. Um, that's it for right now. If I have any more questions, I will raise my hand again, but I do want to talk about the increased noise that has happened since the freeway was raised. This area, I'm on the general plan committee and this area is a highly polluted area. And that is really disappointing to find out how polluted this area is. And the city really needs to not just look at Rainier, but look beyond that because we deserve to have clean air and that is not happening at all in this area. And the documents I'm referring to are coming right from the city. So I think you guys are doing a great job and thank you so much for having this meeting. I think the notification, I don't think I've ever received a notification yet I live in the area. So that we might wanna talk about that so people do know more, but it seemed like people in the quad lots, I was um, listening to their conversations and I thought they were informed and I thought the city was working to inform people. And I wanna thank you for tonight. Okay, thank you, Janice. Uh, next we have M. Sullivan. Okay. Hi there, can you guys hear me? Yes, thank you. Okay, great. Um, thank you very much, Mr. Parisi for the uh, presentation, it was excellent. I'm commenting to express my enthusiastic support for a four to three lane conversion for Rainier Avenue. Petaluma has declared a climate emergency. And as we continue to grow rapidly, if we're gonna meet our greenhouse gas emission goals, we need to get much more of the public out walking and biking. So to have that happen, we need our roads to be much safer. Much of Petaluma, as Teddy Herzog said, at this time is treacherous for folks who are on bikes. We have far too many bike accidents, including lethal ones. So this definitely needs to change. Just based on the reduction in car accidents alone that the statistics back up, this conversion is a no brainer. For better or for worse, we took 30 acres of land in the heart of our town and built the Deer Creek Shopping Center, which is largely comprised of restaurants. Petalumans living in the subdivisions that empty onto Rainier should be able to bike and walk to the Deer Creek Shopping Center and the dog park and do it safely. Approximately 30% of the car trips taken in Petaluma are less than two miles. This is beyond wasteful. It not only contributes to toxic traffic emissions and global warming, but also unnecessarily puts many more cars on the road, making it less safe for bikers and pedestrians. Street trees are absolutely essential. As we know, it's getting much hotter. 
trees are needed to reduce the heat island effect. So again, if we want to see more people bike and walk, we've got to provide shaded routes for them to do it. The numbers that David Parisi mentioned regarding the Rainier connector are absolutely harrowing. A 60 to 65% increase in traffic and at peak 525 cars per hour in each direction. Where Ramey and Associates consultants have already shown that every single census track in Petaluma is adversely impacted by traffic emissions, and I'm a toxicologist with the state of California, let's ensure that we turn the west end of Rainier Avenue into a sensitive nature park and not a vehicular parkway. With this road diet idea, you're going in the right direction. If we were thusly to add back and in fact exceed the current traffic volume on Rainier Avenue with the Rainier connector, it's my concern that you would create a significant social and environmental justice issue. So again, thank you very much. I certainly hope this comes to pass. All the statistics warrant it coming to pass and I think you're doing a great thing. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Uh, next, Jerry Wilkinson. Hello, thank you. Um, uh, I'm Jerry Wilkinson. Uh, I'm also a member of the uh, Petaluma, or excuse me, the Pedestrian Bike Advisory Committee. So I just want to mention that. Uh, as far as the, the presentation, thank you, it was very good. That met many of these things here I, I strongly uh, uh, support. And as far as the noticing goes, uh, I would like to point out that uh, we talked about this at PBAC back in June, I believe, and uh, a couple times. And Ken uh, was very uh, aware of noticing, and I have full faith that he did the, the required noticing. Uh, I received a notice, and I'm in a, a different section of East Petaluma. So uh, if he didn't get it, I, I don't understand why he didn't, but uh, I, I have full faith that he did that uh, uh, to the extent that it's required and probably beyond. Um, I, I, I like, you know, cutting it down to three lanes is as uh, Bora said, is a, is a no brainer. Uh, that's great. Uh, we certainly need trees. You know, Teddy kind of brought up a, a good point too, is, this is an opportunity um, to, to really set something, uh, a precedent of where we want to go. We have a, a, the city has the 2030 climate uh, carbon neutral goal. And to me that we need to really cut back on all these carbon producing uh, vehicles. And it, what that really means is we have to start changing our culture into biking and, and walking and uh, alternative modes, public transit, and other alternative modes of transportation. So to do that, one of the things we need to do is get rid of the parking. Instead of thinking of everything as auto-centric, we need to eliminate that. Um, and we talked about this at PBAC, and, and Ken is uh, well aware of it. Um, I, I would suggest that we need to eliminate parking on both sides of the street, both sides of the street. We do not need all that parking. That apartment complex, uh, those units have their parking in there. Um, if they have more than two cars, perhaps it would be a better idea to encourage them via not providing parking to not have so many cars. We don't know who needs more than two cars. I, I, Personally, I don't understand that. Uh, the quads on the north side all have each house, four houses in each quad, has a two-car garage and space for two cars in their driveway. And again, that should be sufficient parking. Um, and also, if, if you do uh, attempt to put parking on the north side, I think uh, the parking as it's uh, in the diagram creates a, a, a wall, a visual barrier uh, between cyclists inside, between the sidewalk and the parked cars, and cars that might be turning in or out of those different uh, 11, I believe it is, 11 or 13 uh, quad units. So uh, 
And uh, imagine now you have a little person uh, whose, whose head height is below uh, a, a car. So you're driving your car to pull into your driveway. You're, you're not going to see that little person. So I, I, I would like to eliminate parking altogether. Um, and trees are very important. Uh, they suck up, they process the, the carbon. I probably skipped class that day, but I believe it's called photosynthesis. And, uh, you know, they're very important. Also, they calm, they, they cool the asphalt, which bounces uh, off the heat. It, it seems like a, a simple minor thing, but they're very consequential and they're very important. Um, I'd also like to see benches along there. Again, this goes back to the idea that this could be a, a precedent setting. This could be a nice walkway for residents along that street to just go out and walk up and down with some trees, some plantings. You get tired, you got a bench you can sit on. You've got crosswalks that are wide or safe. They're easy to get across the street. You know, there's changes that could be made that could really be uh, not just traffic calming, but set a whole precedent in the direction we would like to take our city. Uh, to Teddy's point, bicycle riding throughout the city is uh, a challenge. Jerry, this is Ingrid. I'm just gonna interrupt and, and ask yeah. you to wrap up so that we have time for okay. everyone else All to right. add. So I wanna see benches in there. I'd also like to see the bus stops enhanced. One of the bus stops has a pull-in area I'd like all, all of them to have that pull-in area so they are not in the traffic lane, okay? And Thank you I so much, Gary. Thank you very much, Ingrid. And we also, just for any of you who want to share any additional thoughts, more details, um, we have a form on our website, um, cityofpetaluma.org slash Rainier, um, because those are important details. We don't want to miss anything. I just want to make sure that everyone has a chance to kind of ask questions and, and share some thoughts. Thanks so much, Jerry. Okay, thanks Ingrid, thanks Jerry. Uh, next we have Bev at Protect Wild Petaluma. Okay, Bev, you should be able to speak now if you unmute. Okay, thank you. Thank you for the great presentation and all the information. Um, I think it was very complete. Um, I do, um, I'm 77 myself, and I used to have a really hard time getting around until I had my knee replaced. Um, and, and so every step I had to walk to my car was agony. And so I can understand people not wanting to walk across the street, although from what has been said, maybe it's true, maybe they would have a place to park at their homes. I, 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 don't, I don't know where I am on that. I, I live on the west side and I in a way I'm embarrassed to weigh in here, but it doesn't seem like many people who are going to be directly affected have weighed in. And and so I would I think that it would be really good if they told their friends, you know, the people who are listening, you know, tell everyone you know about it. Um, and the um, the other thing I thought of, though, was I remember thinking about this meeting, and the first place I went to look was at the city website under meetings, and it wasn't listed there. So, you know, there was city council and, you know, uh, public art and all that, but this was not listed there. So I think there should be a place where people can find it in, in that kind of location. I want to vote for trees. Uh, people don't want to rake leaves. They can hire somebody to do it. Uh, but it's um, it's wonderful to have the trees, and the trees will decrease pollution. Uh, they, um, as someone mentioned, as Jerry mentioned, photosynthesis, it works. Um, so it's really important. It'll cool the street. It'll make it so much pleasanter to walk. And... As um, Maura Sullivan said, maybe we can have a lovely tree-lined walk to a park at the far end of Rainier. Um, the, um, let's see, I'm trying to see what I left out. Uh, 
I think I've got it pretty much. The question of few bike riders, uh, I agree with Teddy. It It's taking your life in your hands to ride a bike around Petaluma. And uh, I think I would like to ride a bike, but right now I think it's it's close to suicide. So <laughs> I think that uh, that those bike lanes might get used. So I, And I hope, like I said, that we can make it workable for people in the neighborhood who are handicapped. So that's about it. Thank you for listening. Okay, thanks Beth. Uh, next we have Carolyn Brand. So Carolyn, you should be able to speak now. Mute. Hello, hi. Thank you, I was muted. Um, I'm glad to have an opportunity to weigh in as a Rainier Avenue residence and very committed to this neighborhood. Thank you uh, for the very professional presentation, which we would expect no less from such a fine consultancy. Um, I was struck at the beginning by, um, and the term opportunity has come up a couple of times and David uh, emphasized the opportunity aspect in um, sort of a, a cow around the um, bike lane bullet point. Um, what also struck me, well, I would just like to say um, throughout this presentation, the overall impression was that we have a huge elephant in the room that's being completely ignored. That is the fact that we're talking about a three block span where we have within two and a half blocks, I and that's all estimate, but we're talking a very short span of residential neighborhood. We have 56 homes on the north side, all of which are on quad lots. We have, so please make note of these, which should be part of your presentation and educating the significance of different types of um, bike lane, which is what I'm gonna get into. I'm a biker, I support it, and I am dedicated to Rainier. And I stand here to say your primary responsibility in your design development is to consider the existing conditions. You've done a great job assessing um, statistics, cars, parking, numbers of cars, but there seems to have been the fact that this is a street of quad lots, four large homes, high density population, these four bedroom homes on these quad lots are made up of family members, couples, families, tenants, uh, roommates, housemates. This is 2022. Same with Park Place, but I'm selfishly interested in the north side of Rainier to talk about decreasing auto usage. Do you really think that this, th your agenda for this three block span, three blocks is going to affect the lofty goals of the vision plan for Petaluma, Bay Area, California, Okay, back to the term opportunity. It appears to me that there is not enough information submitted about this bike lane parking configuration you're proposing. No sane person would oppose traffic calming lane reduction, all of that makes sense. You did a great job referring to the street, the street itself. You did not refer to the neighborhood, which what it's made up for. I poured through, I've done a lot of research on this project. I have poured through all of the state and federal guidelines for bike, lane, parking, street, 
design and re revision. The federal guideline is a 148 document strictly talk talking about class four separated bike lanes. This is a big deal. We all love bikers. We love children. This neighborhood is not part of the network of children trap going to school, but it may become that. We obviously need good, excellent bike support, but completely disregarding the actual context, which basically you've overlooked one of the federal guidelines, four key components of considering class four separated bike wide. And the first consideration is context. Context of our neighborhood. What are you thinking? You have 14 driveways. Each one would be required by federal rules to set back parking 20 feet on either side of each driveway, plus foliage. We have existing huge trees and landscaping on the north side of Rainier. I don't know what to talk about trees is. There are, there are trees, people have to keep them trim to the proper uh, so they don't overhang the, the parking and interfere. I'm going off here, but I want to pull the focus back to the class four separated bike way known as cycle tracks. You need to understand, which I know Mr. Parisi does quite well, and I have visuals, to present, including a neighborhood alternate proposal. Um, I'll take a sip of water. Carolyn, this is Ingrid. I just, I want to repeat what I think I'm hearing. Um, your primary concern or what I'm hearing a lot about is about the bike lane and the north and how those interact with the north it's side the of the elephant in the room and the, and the quad homes. I just wanted to make sure and reiterate that. And, Every and did you, you had a question, did you, um, you had a proposal that you thought would be yes. a better idea? Yes. First of all, the reference is to the quad homes. The neighborhood is quad homes. It's not a little commune of quad homes. The whole block north side is quad. When you're designing in context, but we need some education here. This I'm referring to class four protected bikeway. We're not objecting. No, everyone wants bikeways. They should be well marked. They should be safe. They should have buffers from th through traffic. But your agenda opportunity to which would be in our third block, three block span, the very first. Quad, uh, class four separated bikeway in all of Sonoma and Marin counties. None exist. Even a very um, outstanding project done by Mr. Parisi's firm, Mill Valley, Miller Avenue, won awards for its complete street design. I have the photo, the graphic of um, I don't see buttons for screen sharing, so uh, I don't. Well, Everything let me started too fast. We didn't get a chance to set up. In but our webinar, there do not share. exist any separated class four bikeways. We have plenty of room, as you've proven, with the 64 feet wide boulevard that Rainier, there is. Um, a lot of capacity there, but to present this opportunity to do a separated bike lane, which creates incredibly huge inconvenience, hardship, disruption, and frankly, trashing of a street of 56, 56 homes, all of the residents, all of the traffic in and out. 
I have a video from the San Francisco Police Department participant, Chrissy, of the view sight lines that occur in, in entering and exiting a driveway when there is this type of configuration. It's very serious. We will be we will be subject to so much danger with that lack of sight line to the through traffic. It does not make sense. We have conventional bike lanes everywhere in Petaluma. We need more. We need the consideration to be how does this cycle track network with other bike lanes. You reference the successful Maria improvement, which is literally a block away from me. Um, the bike lanes there are quite wide. They are outside of the parking. The parking is against the curb as it is on all bikeways in Marin and Sonoma counties. Class so of bikeways are specialized for urban Carolyn, I just want to stop you for a second um, uh, because I think what we're hearing is that you have concerns about the bike lane and how it interacts with the quad homes, which is a very, very good point. Um, and I think at this point, we, those details would probably be best um, offline with Ken so we can go through that design. Uh, we haven't proposed anything specifically yet. so. Um, that feedback is something we're going to take into consideration. And I, I just wanted to cut you off. I'm going to put you back on and just ask you if you have anything to wrap up um, so that we can um, hopefully give everyone a chance to speak before the eight o'clock end of our meeting. Thank you so much. And real quick, uh, Ingrid, would it be helpful if I address some of the um, questions yeah, that came up? I just... think maybe it, maybe it would. Carolyn, I'm going to um, let right. David just kind of get some feedback there. And sure, sure. And I'll, I'll cover a few of the other items that were brought up also from previous speakers. Okay. Uh, we heard about, you know, uh, somebody identified if there's some additional crossings provided or even some of the uh, existing ones to look at street lighting. That was a good, that was some good feedback. Um, somebody also mentioned noise. And it's true, faster vehicles make higher noise levels. So that's the benefit of traffic calming as well. Uh, many speakers tonight so far has talked about street trees being uh, important, essential, not just for aesthetics, but uh, some of the environmental uh, considerations. We heard about enhancing bus stops. Don't forget about that. And then uh, lastly, about the class four bikeways. There are several uh, in Marin now. Uh, and uh, North Bay, and there's several being uh, designed and implemented uh, throughout the North Bay. It is true, and this is what Carolyn brought up, that it's very important to design them well with setbacks near driveways. So we've heard that loud and clear. So if it's on the north side or south side or, or however, um, that is, uh, Carolyn is absolutely right, that you know it's important to um, designed for safety. And I think we've heard that from some previous speakers too. So Ken, did you want to add anything? Because I know I, she brought up, like, I know you've done some research and maybe some context would help. Yeah, no, um, you know, thank, thank you very much, Carolyn. I want to, you know, I just want to say that what, what we're doing here is, is a quick build. Um, the city did this out at Eli and Caulfield, very similar condition, not with protected bike lanes, but with the intersection, similar no to what we're doing. <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry. No one has done okay. this Please. type of configuration okay. in Petaluma or Marin or Sonoma to date. There are wonderful opportunities for them. We're questioning whether this neighborhood is the proper opportunity to create an incubator, a conceptual idea that has no basis in the actual functioning of this neighborhood. You have, all we're asking is for you to switch. You have plenty of room. You can have painted bikeway, 10 feet wide if you want, but moving the, the balance between 
creating the sight line difficulty. No, it's not resolved so, by the um, snap of a finger eliminating yeah. parking on 20 feet adjacent either side of every driveway. That's 14 yeah. times. How many? Caroline, can we let so Karen, respond? Caroline, just so yeah, let me, let me just, let me just respond. Um, so thank you, Carolyn. Um, you know, this is a quick build. We're, we're, we're dealing with paint on the ground. This is something that if it isn't going to work, we can remove it at a later date. Um, I want to reference something that Santa Rosa did. You know, they did it on Owen, Summerfield, Yalupa, and Montgomery, where they actually went in and did protected bike lanes. And it's actually, I've biked it, I've driven it, and it works really well. So I just, I'd hope that you would, you know, work with us on it and certainly email me you know my contact information is on the city's website there's a comment form for rainier specific and and you know we want to hear from you on it and i i hope that we can lay some of the concerns and and fears that 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 you would have um on that thank you thanks so much it looks like um we have one we have We've got about 10 hands still up, so we want to make sure everyone has a chance to speak. So I'm going to pass it back to Jessica. Okay, uh, next is Justin. Um, sorry, my buttons are. Okay. It says, Justin, you're using an older version of Zoom, so I need to promote you to a panelist to be able to speak. Is that okay, Ingrid? Okay. Hello, sorry about that. Can you hear me? Yes, thank you. Okay, Hi, I'm Justin, uh, I'm from Bike Petaluma and I rode my bike through Rainier just today to get home from downtown. Um, bike Petaluma supports the proposed improvements, especially the buffered bike lanes, which makes biking safe for all ages and abilities. And these improvements can improve safety for all road users, not just bikes, and reduce parking demand and traffic by reducing the car reliance. Uh, additionally, we would like to request uh, bollards to keep cars out of the lanes and buffer. Uh, eastbound bike button at the McDowell intersection. I don't know why out of the four directions, that's the only one that doesn't have a button for bikes to activate the intersection. Um, and safer connections from Rainier to the South Point and Lynch Creek trails so that after going through the buffered bike lanes on Rainier, you don't just end up on McDowell, which is unsafe. That's it. Thank you. Okay. Thanks, Justin. Uh, next, we have Josh Simmons. Hi there. Can you hear me all right? Yes, we can. Okay, so sorry. Uh, I would like to thank the staff and consultants for their work on this proposed roads diet and for convening forums for people to provide their input. I'm still kind of new to the subject matter, but as a member of the General Plan Advisory Committee, I've been learning quickly. And this work sounds very much in keeping with the vision that is coming into focus there. Given what I'm hearing from pu some public commenters, it sounds like the communication itself has been a source of frustration. I wonder what we can learn from that going forward. And I'm hoping that we can all hear each other and keep a spirit of collaboration and problem solving. Because this is important work, its impacts are both knowable and positive. It's safer for pedestrians, for cyclists, for drivers. And given the low usage, it's clearly an ideal candidate for this kind of work. For me, of the things pulled, the streets and separated bike lanes stand out as features in line with our city's goals. I love in particular, a proposal from one of the other public commenters to put a park at the western terminus of right here. I would add my voice in support of this project and thank you for your time. Okay, thank you, Josh. Uh, next is Gordon. Oops. Oh, no, I'm not muted. Okay, next is Gordon. There we go. Yes. Uh, I'm the original resident in Petaluma's Quads, first one to ever been there. Wife and I are now 80s, in our 80s and really concerned about the safety. So heavy support for damping traffic, though I'm not convinced that what you're doing will do a damn thing. 
to damp tracking. The parking is a big issue, I think. I don't know who did your survey for the number of cars are parked, but it must have been in the middle of the afternoon when everybody's at work. Go by here at night, and there are very few parking slots available for anybody on the north side. So if the south side moves over, they're going to have to park on top of each other. It's the only way it's going to fit. Uh, also concerned about the safety coming out of the driveways. Even now, it's dangerous coming out with just the one park cars there. You cannot see, I'm on the north side, you cannot see people driving from the uh, parkway out to our place. It's virtually impossible. you got to inch out. Uh, people have complained about the garbage trucks. Uh, I think Ken or someone said, oh, hey, don't worry about that. But those damn garbage trucks have to stop in the only lane that will be left. They got to stop in the third lane, or sorry, the traffic lane to pick up our garbage. What's that going to do? You know, when they come around, the peak hours around eight, eight to nine o'clock, they seem to be out there rattling cans. But the postman stops there. Only place he can park would probably be right there in the travel lane going west. That's got to be a problem for everybody. Uh, big problem with the crosswalks I found. My wife uses them regularly. She uses a uh, one of the medical scooters. You push the button on the sidewalk, start the light flashing. You have to go behind the parked cars to get out. If the cars don't see anybody actually in the crosswalk, they just zoom right through. Happened to her this morning. She inched out, a car going east, saw her plainly, stopped. Another car coming west literally breezed by her. She could have touched it. Even the car on the other side honked his horn loudly at the guy. This doesn't stop. These crosswalks with a bike lane, a parked car to either side, it's just going to be horrible. Uh, I'm also very disappointed at the turnout you got from the people in this area. And I think all the wonderful and comments about how well you're doing, or most of them anyway, came from people that don't live here. They live on the west side. It's sort of like the old thing, you know, everybody wants to have proper housing for the poor, just don't build it in my area. What you're doing here might be fine for them, but I sure as hell not helping us. That's all I have. Okay, thank you, Gordon. Uh, next we have Barry Busowitz. Uh, thank you. I just unmuted. Um, you know, I like time limits. I just set my timer for two minutes. I think that in order to have staff and consultants be able to be engaged with the people who are participating and for the people who are participating to focus their thinking, it's a good idea to have time limits and failing to do so discourages community input. Uh, and I greatly appreciate the work of the staff and the consultants. I think you're doing a great job. Um, so parking, um, I live on the west side. I do not live on the east side. I live in Petaluma. I live in Petaluma. I want a walkable, safe community for all of us, west side, east side. I've walked Rainier Avenue. I've ridden my bike along it. I have knocked doors on Rainier Avenue. I have a feel for Rainier Avenue in terms of what it's like to go there and be there on person, on foot. And, and, and I know something about it. I live on the west side. Um, I have a blind spot in my driveway. I have parking issues. My wife complains about the parking on the street. I don't go to the city and complain to the city about that because I live in a vibrant, wonderful, beautiful, growing community. And parking issues are part of it. Traffic is part of it. And establishing better infrastructure for bikes and for people and for trees, please, for trees is part of it. If you could put a median of trees all the way down Rainier, it would change the street. If you could do that and make it work for bikes and cars and people, that would be magnificent. People would love it. 
thank you. I bless you for your time and I appreciate your work. That's two minutes. Okay, thanks Barry. Thank you Barry for your feedback on the time. I will I will take that into consideration um, uh, to keep things moving along. We'll, we'll, we'll do that next time, thank you. Okay, next we have Taryn. Hi, thank you, good evening. Um, thank you, David, for your presentation. And thank you for bringing Bree and Jennifer as young people that are really what so many of us of all ages are pinning our hopes on to transform our city. Um, yeah, our streets are certainly dangerous and we do need a proof of concept. We need to take a step forward with doing something that's uh, safe for biking because I do not let myself or anyone I know go out on those streets. Um, I don't know that Rainier in that section is the best section. And I only say that because I uh, appreciate the comments by the neighbors there. I do live on the other side of Rainier, a, a little bit to the west, but not on these blocks. I have walked all of them. And each of these, whatever they're called, quads, think of them as a cul-de-sac. You're walking along blocks that have multiple cul-de-sacs. And I can appreciate that when there's not enough parking there, where the heck do the cars go? I can tell you in my neighborhood where they go, because we got a lot of people that are putting multiple families in a four bedroom house and their eight cars are not on the street. No, they are chopping down their trees and putting them on their lawns. And it is an eyesore and it is a, uh, not good for our climate because they're chopping down our trees. So I do appreciate that cars are not going away. And on a rainy day, when you got little kids, you got a dog, you're not going to put them all on your bicycle and head on out. It's just not reality. But what I do want to make a comment on is context. Context is really important. I don't know everything about this neighborhood, but I do know what I've observed. Thank you for letting me share that. But there is a greater context. The greater context is all of Rainier. And if we are to move forward with bike lanes here, I would hope that we are extending our thinking out beyond the three blocks, regardless of whatever issues. Let's, let's say that it's a perfect three blocks for this situation, but we wanna extend our thinking out to appreciate further west, the terminus of Rainier at 101 must stop there because if you, Right now, Rainier is getting taken out of our general plan, is being decertified. It is a climate disaster. And to take it out of our, um, to decertify it right now would only mean potentially refunding about $5 million to past development fees paid. $5 million is nothing. So it's going to be taken out. If we, we need to put a park there, because if we don't, and make that uh, remain open for a roadway, you're gonna undo all of this good work. It's gonna open up Rainier to be an expressway. And that you're gonna just be taking step backwards and undoing all of your good work and putting people's lives at risk. So let's please think context of the three blocks. Thank you. And let's please think context beyond the three blocks. We have a terrible, Crosstown connectability for bike and ped. So any connection over to the west side through Rainier needs to be only bike, only ped, no, no expressway uh, because it's just going to flood it with traffic and we're all going to be getting injured. Thank you very much. Good night. Thank you, Taryn. Just to remind everyone tonight, we're focused on the portion of Rainier Avenue um, that does not involve the Crosstown connector. I just want to remind anyone else who's going to be speaking that we're um, that we're not talking about the connector tonight. That is another important issue, um, but not the focus of our meeting tonight. Thanks so much. Okay, thanks, Ingrid. Uh, next, we have S. Kirks. Good evening. Um, I'll make my comments brief. Um, I'm Susan Kirks. I'm president of Madrone Audubon Society in Sonoma County. I live in Petaluma. I do not live in East Petaluma. I live on the west side. And I'm so interested because so many people participating in this workshop this evening are people who live on the west side of Petaluma. So what I'd like to do is lift up 
the voices of the residents in this neighborhood who are clearly giving you some really, really good points. Uh, Carolyn Brand, Janice Cater Thompson, the gentleman who spoke last, I'm sorry, I don't remember his name, who gave you information about his experience living there. And my sense is that the city of Petaluma really needs to do more outreach to the people who live in that immediate area. Ms. Brand uh, was questioning about trees, saying that there are already so many trees there. And then many other people are weighing in and saying we need street trees through that whole area. What I'd like to say is um, raise some questions for the consultants. If you're going to put street trees in that area, how can it be done safely? How can it be done so these trees don't look like every other median street tree, poor trees in such bad condition here in Petaluma, particularly on the east side. If you go down on McDowell Boulevard or if you look pretty much anywhere on the east side, uh, what happens when trees are put in is that they're not maintained. And I agree, they're beautiful. Um, of course, as an Audubon president, I know that they create habitat, but honestly, you really have to work more with the the residents of this neighborhood to find the best way to serve them. I agree with the bike lanes. I don't think anybody's questioning that those shouldn't be put in, but really what's feasible for these people in this neighborhood? And honestly, you just can't have Ken go out and be talking to people and sharing his experience with he, he drove a lane in Santa Rosa and he liked it and it worked well. That is not the kind of outreach and interaction and communication that we really need to have with neighborhoods in East Petaluma. And I have learned so much tonight just listening and appreciating the people who did show up. But think about it. Think about the, the absence of other people who didn't show up and why is that? I think you need to have another workshop and I would very much appreciate attending that. And the last thing I'd like to say is there's been a mention of a nature park. Okay, do the people in that neighborhood, in that community, what would serve them best? Uh, do they know what a nature park is? I'd certainly be happy to meet with any of them to share concepts, talk about design, help with that kind of enhancement of their lived experience as part of this process. This really is for the neighbors and the, the people who spoke. Uh, and I just really appreciate those in East Petaluma who showed up tonight. So thank you very much. Thank you, Susan. And I, this is Ingrid. I just want to remind the group too that this workshop is the workshop um, that was intended to represent the neighborhood. Our noticing was primary, ge primarily geared towards the neighborhood. We sent direct noticing to the neighborhood. We did some broader noticing. Um, and so we obviously have a broader audience, but that was our intention. So I, I hear, I, I do notice that we don't have as many residents as I would have hoped. And um, we'll look to see um, how we can do some additional outreach. But I do just wanna say that that was the purpose of tonight's meeting. And I'm again, really grateful to those neighbors who did speak up and, and share their thoughts. I think we've got some good feedback. Thank you so much. We've got a few more speakers. So Jessica, I'll pass it back to you. Okay, thanks Ingrid. Next we have John Schritz. John, go ahead. Okay, thank you. Thank you for discussions uh, so far. Uh, a lot of good things have been said, uh, as, as Sharon just shared with you, what is done in the past. I entirely agree with what everyone has said so far. And I think you're taking it all consideration. Wonderful. Uh, I happen to do live on the east side. I'm also on the tree committee. I'm the chair of the tree committee, and I do support trees. But I understand this is basically a paving and striping with paint and not a reconstruction job. And it, and it will cost a lot of money to do that reconstruction that you really need to do to put trees in. So yeah, so, I, so as a tree person, I, I fully favor them, but I understand the cautionary difference, as what Sharon said, the what you need to do to put the trees in there is gonna be a much higher level than, than what we normally do to make it right. And let's make it right. So if we can, great, but if we understand if you can't, so that's the first thing. So that's a tree person, because I'm on relief and I'm on the tree committee. 
Um, I'm also on the east side on bike rider. I travel down uh, Rainier, but only by car, not by bike usually, because on bike, that's not a usual path to go anywhere. <laughs> but that's going to be a game changer. And you, you've mentioned the um, the uh, the Rainier crossing um, is a huge game changer for this town, however it evolves. There's three things that can happen with it. It can either be closed to everything. It can be open to bicycles and peds. It can be open to cars and above, or it could be open to what I call gap vehicles, things in between that are coming electric, small, tiny mini cars. So that changed, and it's about to open. At least the under, underpass is almost done. It'll be done here shortly. When that opens up and people can at least walk and if they can walk and I'm not the bike, no people, I'm just in the process of doing a video, a drone video of the entire area, looking at overview of that entire section of town. So that's one of the things I'm working on now for, because I'm also on the GPAC and looking at how that can be used to figure out for the public what to do with this entire section of town there uh, in the center there. And that is a huge game changer for Rainier and why Rainier is such a good choice for this project, because when that when we can take a bicycle, go from this side of town, and I can get across town, because there's a bridge there. There's a, now a, but people don't know, there's a bikeway right next to the tra trail right there that's going in next to the train, the, the smart train. And when I can take my bicycle down Rainier, get under the freeway, get onto that bicycle path and take the bridge, which is already built right now, and take it across that nobody knows, it goes right to, to the other side, the Petaluma Boulevard, when people find out that they can do that, walk and bicycle, go across, not the Lynch Trail, because Lynch Trail is getting thick with people now. I've, I have to avoid people on my bike to get through there. So one could be, so I, so as a game changer, the amount of traffic, not only in cars, 65, it, I'm not worried about the car side. I don't think the $100 million car path will be made, but the $1 million bike path might be made. And that's a huge game changer for bicycles. And I think the volume of bicycles will increase 100 to 200% when we have that path and people can stop and visit the that area along the river with along the pathway. So I think your your bike numbers need to be changed dramatically with the future numbers that will be, not what the current numbers are now. And I think your car numbers are, uh, we talked about the uh, uh, a crossing. I think those are uh, not viable because I, I doubt, I, I have a 90% probability I'm putting on that that will never even happen for the car crossing at this point in time. Um, so I'd like to change that emphasis there of your proposal of what you need to do and why we need bike lane there, uh, I think is a really good reason. So I just want to bring that up as a as a talking point for how you're approaching this and how you're approaching the public and the numbers and the stats you're using to uh, propose this particular site. I think it's a wonderful project you're working on and you're hearing everybody. Um, that's all I'm going to say tonight. I think everyone said everything else that I wanted to say. Thank you. Okay, thank you, John. Uh, next we have Robert Raven. Yeah, um, John just said a lot of things I was going to say, but uh, um, we need to look towards the future, and the future will include bicycles, pedestrians, scooters. Um, you know, using Rainier, hopefully to cross across, you know, to uh, um, the other side of town, and of course, cars can use Corona. Um, we need more trees and habitat for wildlife. Um, I mean, it's gonna. We need to cool this planet down and provide a place for wildlife corridors. Um, and uh, yeah, and so we just basically need to make it less car centric and more pedestrian bike centric. Thank you. Okay. Thanks, Robert. Um, and next we have Janice. Um, I didn't know that my- Sorry, was... Janice. Yeah, you already spoke, I think, right? I already yeah. spoke. Thank you. Good. Thank you <laughs> so much. Wait, you. I really appreciate all the feedback and David. When and actually Ken and Ingrid, all of you, appreciate your responses back. Um, you really know your subject. Thank you. Sorry about this. <laughs> oh no problem. Thank you so much, Janice. And okay. uh, before we wrap up, I just wanted to give Ken, um, Chris, a minute to kind of summarize and, and wrap up. Our next steps are to kind of take this feedback and um, you know look at our options. But I'm gonna I'm gonna pass this over to Ken and, and Chris before we wrap up tonight. Thanks so much. Yeah. Thank thank you. I'll I'll uh, I'll just start out here and Chris can can kind of wrap up here. But I, I wanted to say you know regarding the parking survey, so I went out, I've been out on Rainier a lot. I've walked through the neighborhood, I've biked through it, I've driven through it. So I really 
I want to emphasize that, you know, we don't take this project lightly and what we're trying to do, it's a change. Um, and, and I think it can be done in a healthy way. And we've got some really, really good, you know, minds working on it. So regarding the parking survey, I went out there um, early in the morning on a weekday. I went out there in the afternoon on a weekday. I was there on a weekend and, and I looked at the parking. I feel like I have a pretty good understanding um, of, of the volumes that were there. So, you know, that work was done. I'm sending an email right now with regard to the garbage truck. Cause I, I heard that I've heard that comment before and I definitely want to, you know, make sure that we address it in a, you know, in a, in a, in a workable, healthy way. Um, and same with the, the, the postal access. And then, you know, I want to emphasize, you know, in the, the, the crossing experience, crossing Rainier is kind of sort of like crossing a highway. I mean, if you've got, you know, top speeds of folks, you know, 40 miles an hour, 85th percentile, that means 15% of the traffic is driving faster. And, and um, it's, we can shorten the crossing distance. So instead of having this longer, you know, four lanes to cross, you're actually, you can shorten it. You just have two lanes to cross. So you can, you know, from the standpoint of reducing the delay time to the motor vehicle to the, you know, a quicker crossing for the pedestrian, it's kind of a win-win. It's just, a, it's a healthy thing to do. So, um, you know, I definitely heard, heard these comments. We definitely want to address these, you know, in proper fashion. And um, I just appreciate everybody's support in the process. So thank you. Yes, thank you, Ken. I'll, I'll just echo that we've heard a lot of great feedback tonight and we've taken copious notes. Um, some of the safety concerns that were shared tonight, we, we also shared. We're definitely gonna be uh, looking into those much, much uh, deeper, particularly with uh, some of the site distance issues and, and people coming out of driveways, I think that's a very serious situation. And we wanna make sure that our proposed project um, will enhance uh, safety for everyone, including cyclists and pedestrians. So thank you for sharing all that. I want you to know we take uh, your concerns very seriously and we thank you all very much for your time tonight. And I also wanna extend a special thank you to uh, uh, David Parisi and his team. I think they did an outstanding job pulling together uh, the presentation this evening. And I also want to thank Ingrid and Jessica for helping to moderate. Any Thanks, and Chris, could, could I, Christopher, could I offer one last thing? Absolutely. From our perspective, this is, as a firm, this is, we plan and, and we design and we renovate streets to make communities more livable and safer. And, and Rainier Avenue is, is a wide street. Uh, it's too wide. Let's be real, real honest. Um, there's, uh, there's a lot of issues that we've heard about on the street, but as I mentioned in a speaker caught me saying it multiple times earlier, there's a lot of opportunities to make this street safer for, for the residents, uh, make it a street that you're proud of, uh, a street that looks great, that you can cross a lot safer. You can get out of your driveway in a safer manner also with better sight lines. Uh, so we think there are a lot of opportunities and we do thank you for the great input we heard tonight, we got a lot of really good input and that's what we needed so that we can do some refinements on these options and uh, sharpen the pencil up. And that's exactly where we are in that three-step process that I went over earlier tonight, the planning and, and design. So this is exactly where we need to be and uh, we will incorporate this, this wonderful feedback. So again, thank you very much. Our next steps are to, uh, to do that, uh, continue working on uh, any additional outreach with the community. Uh, that we need to do, as Ingrid mentioned, and um, you know, later this spring, try to get this design further along so we can implement something uh, by by summer or late summer. So that's that's the target that we're going for, and we really appreciate the feedback that we've gotten tonight. Super important to us. Ingrid, back to you to close it down. You're on mute. Hey, thank you. I'll just um, wrap up this meeting and I want to thank you all that um, gave up your evening to talk about Rainier and these um, concepts and ideas for making changes to one of our important roads. Um, we'll be taking this back um, and all this feedback under consideration and um, 
we'll be, be keeping folks informed through our website and through email communications. If you'd like to stay informed, make sure you go to cityofpetaluma.org slash Rainier and submit your email to the, to the feedback form. And we can make sure that if there are new plans or anything that needs to be reviewed that you'll get noticed right away. So thank you so much. And also if you go to cityofpetaluma.org and um, click subscribe, you can get our weekly um, update, which will cover this project and a whole host of other projects and, and inf information that we, we curate for our community every week. So thanks again for attending and, and uh, hopefully we'll be seeing you all soon. Thank you everybody.